Today, I'm going to present our work on the modern inversion attack with uh, list information and an in-depth analysis of its disparate vulnerability. Uh, the other authors of this work are the Dae Lim Chang and Professor Menas from Penn State University. Um, so let's first take a look at the modern inversion attack. So with the increasing of uh, volume of data, machine learning uh, application has become very popular, but the machine learning models are trained with the data from multiple sources. And these data might be coming from uh, different domains. And some of these data might have also sensitive information like uh, personal information or financial bank data, or it might have also um, medical record and other sensitive training data. So, um, the big tech companies that provide these machine learning models, they train and deploy those models in the cloud server so that um, when given the API access, these models can be accessed to uh, make queries and get prediction from those models um, on the, from the user end. Now, this uh, access to the model uh, also has some privacy and security uh, issues. And there are may, many adversarial attacks might occur here. For example, one of them is the model inversion attack, um, where the adversary with access, query access to the target model, um, the adversary makes queries. And the goal of the adversary is to infer um, the sensitive training data or reconstruct the sensitive uh, data sample in the training uh, instances. So the access to the model might be white box or black box. In the black box, the adversary has, um, don't have the details information regarding the model architecture or the parameter. In our paper, we uh, focus on the black box model inversion attack. Um, in the existing black box model inversion attacks, it considers a wide range of adversarial capabilities. Uh, for example, access to the training data distribution, um, like marginal prior and confusion matrix and other capabilities, but those might not be realistic. That's why in this paper, we mainly focus on uh, developing the black box model inversion attack with the least adversarial capabilities. Um, yeah, so we want to investigate the research question here. If we can design the effective black box model inversion attack with the uh, least adversarial capabilities, and that might represent the more realistic scenario in the real life. Here are some uh, adversarial capabilities that existing work consider. Uh, there are wide range of capabilities from target models, confusion matrix to marginal prior and uh, the training instances, non-sensitive attribute values access. Um, for example, the Fredrickson considers all of these capabilities and the next modern version attack in the black box setup. Uh, also, although it considers uh, reducing the capabilities, but still some of these capabilities might be unrealistic, like access to the non-sensitive attribute values or marginal prior might not seem to be very realistic. That's why uh, in our attack, we consider only these two uh, more realistic capabilities. One is the possible value of the sensitive attribute of different attributes and also the uh, access to the query. Uh, so the adversary can make queries to the model and get the prediction from there. So now let's take a look how we design our uh, attack based on these two uh, capabilities. So we name it as the synthetic database model inversion attribute inference attack. So there are uh, two phases in this pipeline. The first phase is to generate the synthetic data uh, based on the capabilities it has. So the adversary has black box access. So it can query the model and based on the prediction, it generates the synthetic data. So the output of the first phase is the attack data set. And the next phase is it trains the attack model based on the attack data set that it generates in the first phase. So that during the inference time, given the non-sensitive attribute as the input, it can uh, infer the sensitive attribute value. Now let's uh, take the details of um, how the phase one and phase two uh, is designed in our attack. So in the first phase, uh, the synthetic data generation, 
So we consider the adversary knows the uh, non-sensitive and sensitive attribute values. So the possible values. So the first, the adversary randomly picks from the uh, picks the non-sensitive attribute values from the large pool of possible values, and then from k sensitive attribute value, it concatenates those values with the non-sensitive attribute value and generates k records. Then it makes queries to the target model and get k prediction. So the adversary only accepts all the records if all the k predictions are different. Otherwise, the records are rejected. Um, in the next step, the adversary re-randomize the non-sensitive attribute values and generate new records and uh, do the same process. So finally, the accepted K records are contributing to the attack data set. So the output of the first phase is the attack data set. Now adversary uses this attack data set in the next phase to train the attack model. Where uh, the non-sensitive attribute values is the X in the training of the attack model and why is the sensitive attribute value. So that um, when the inference phase comes, given the target records non-sensitive attribute value, the adversary can uh, infer the sensitive attribute value from um, that designed model, attack model. So in our experimental setup, um, we have considered three different target models, the decision tree, deep net, and logistic regression. And we experiment with National Longitudinal Survey, Adult and 538 data set. Um, and our attack considers the same query count as the existing attack with list capabilities that we have mentioned previously. And finally, we also reduce the query number to 50% um, compared to the existing attack. And of course, the capabilities are list. Um, we evaluate it in terms of both binary and multi-class um, sensitive attribute inference. And there are many more results in the paper. Uh, for example, here is one case for the binary sensitive attribute value inference. And um, here in the National Longitudinal Survey data set, the adversary is trying to infer the drug marijuana sensitive attribute. So basically, the individuals were asked whether uh, they have intake of the drug marijuana in the last year. So it was binary attribute. So the outcome was yes or no. The adversary is trying to infer this sensitive attribute value here. And we observe that our proposed attack um, in many metrics, it performs similarly um, across different target models compared to the existing attacks uh, in many cases and even more better in some cases, uh, given that our attack requires the least adversarial capabilities. So for the multi-class, we also observed that um, the existing attacks have very high error bar, which means um, the existing attacks varying the target model, the type of the target model, it is much more uh, unstable. So basically uh, compared to our attack, uh, those attacks performance varies largely as we change the target model type. Um, yeah. And we also observed in some cases, our attack performs uh, better compared to uh, the existing attacks, even in the multi-value case, um, given that we have only the least adversarial capabilities here. Um, yeah, so another interesting observation is, um, even if we reduce the query number of our attack below the 50% threshold, that means if they, uh, our attack has uh, more than 50, more than, uh, uh, fifty percent less queries compared to the existing still is not uh, that much uh, significant drop in terms of performance. So it is still effective. That shows the robustness of our attack with the varying the query numbers. And of course, um, another observation is as we increase the query number, the attack performance slightly improves um, here as it is expected in terms of other privacy attacks. Um, yeah. So. After that, we also investigate another interesting concept here, which is the disparate vulnerability. Um, so far, the existing attacks only consider the average case scenario of attack performance um, while inferring the sensitive attribute. But we have identified that in the modern version attack, given that in a single attribute, there might be multiple subgroups. And depending on these subgroups like age, 
race and sex, there are uh, the adversarial, um, the vulnerability of the subgroups varies between these um, changing these subgroups. For example, in race, different subgroup has different vulnerabilities. So there is a there is a gap in attack performance and that we observe here, which is captured by the disparate vulnerability notion um, in the model inversion attack. We explore it in depth and we observe that the existing um, model inversion attack like level only model inversion attack and even our proposed attack has a gap in terms of attack performance depending on the subgroups. Um, so we uh, perform an in-depth analysis of this disparate vulnerability in our uh, model inversion attack. And um, here we, um, yeah, so here we um, investigate the research question that if we have the existing privacy defense techniques, we, if we apply those to the model inversion attack, are those able to mitigate the disparate vulnerability in the model inversion? And in doing so, we first analyzed the mutual information regularization, um, which was used in the AAAI paper in 2021 as the way to mitigate the model inversion attack. And we want to investigate this one uh, for the disparate vulnerability in model inversion attack and try to see whether this actually reduces the gap between the subgroups. And we observed that the model that is without regularization, the model on the left, um, the gap between the two subgroups and the model on the right is after we apply the regularization. And we observed that when we apply the regularization, the gap between the male and female subgroup is increasing. It, it shows that the mutual information regularization is not consistently able to reduce um, the disparate, disparity in model inversion attack. So we also uh, investigate the other concept, which is called the fairness uh, constraint, and we apply the demographic parity and equalized odds, both of them. Uh, it is widely used uh, concept for the disparate vulnerability mitigation in the membership inference. And we try to see here what happens if we apply it in the model inversion attack. And we observe that although it is applicable for uh, reducing the disparity in membership, but for the case of model inversion attack, we observe that the model without any fairness um, in many cases has lower uh, gap in the uh, vulnerability among the subgroups compared to the case if we apply either of the fairness constraints. So we conclude that fairness constraint here in the model inversion attack does not effectively mitigate the disparate vulnerability. Okay, so now we want to um, further analyze what are the potential disparity factors that might contribute towards uh, this phenomenon in modern inversion attack. And we come up with two sets of possible factors. One is the training data set based, uh, like mutual information correlation between the subgroup attribute and we have the um, other one is the label attribute. And we also have other target model based factors like the overfitting and we analyze how those impact in different um, in the model. So we observe that when the model is a decision tree, uh, the correlation factor has the highest impact towards the disparity in model inversion attack. So this requires further analysis for other um, type of models, target models, for example, the logistic regression or the deep net. Uh, to come up with a generalized decision so that in future we can design our uh, disparity defense technique based on those factors. Now, given that I want to conclude here um, with saying that modern inversion attacks can be designed with least adversarial capabilities and even with limited number of queries. And there is also um, the good relationship between the query number and the attack performance as we have seen in for other privacy attacks. And it is also proven that privacy attack defense um, that we have existing in our work do not consistently mitigate the disparity in modern inversion. So this gives a call for uh, robust disparity mitigation technique based on multi-factor uh, mitigation technique. 
And with that, I'm going to um, finish my talk. And thank you for your time joining here. If you have any question, feel free to ask me.